Welcome to the show that looks at truth, fiction, and reality with a smirk. I'm Aaron Peterson. I'm Amanda Sink. And I'm Zach Parkerson. And welcome to Smirk. Each week, one of our hosts poses an original story, which we then use as a springboard for spirited and lighthearted discussion on whatever the moral or theme of their story was. This week, it is Amanda's turn. I hope this won't be unfair. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm never living that down. The yeah, title. I was making fun of you every week on this title. You know what? Honestly, it's deserved. That was a terrible title. We really weren't bothered by it until you made it. I big, was. So you were upset and we're like, well, like, I guess we're jumping all over that grenade. Was I on drugs when this happened? <laughs> Terrible decisions sometimes, guys. Drugs. <laughs> they're great. I mean, they're not great. <laughs> drugs are bad. Tell me more about your experiences, Zach. Dare to be better. <laughs> Life is unfair. Oh, my God. Uh, are you ready to tell us a story or what? I mean, I guess so. Are you I'm guys even, done humiliating I'm me? I'm with not my even going to ask you what the theme or anything. Oh, is. really? I'm not even going to do it. Nope. Good. I'm just going to let you roll with it, so we can no. be treated. He, yeah, you don't. You like the teases normally. He normally does, but I think he's gotten over asking me because I give him the worst responses, which give him no information. It's cool that you admitted it because I didn't want to bring it up, but. <laughs> Well, I'm not always prepared for that. How do you give any of it away? What do you mean you're not keeping? prepared? You come to this show and just half-ass it every no, week? No, because that is not part of the format to give you hints and suggestions. You need to figure it out on your own, Maybe. buddy. Oh. Wow, this just got sassy. Are you ready for me to tell a story? Not really. <laughs> just talk. It's your favorite thing. Oh, ouch. <laughs> that was unfair. Oh, oh. <laughs> see what you did there. It's your favorite word. It started off strong, Julie and I's relationship. We always knew we'd be together in the long run, and we never really questioned if we should or shouldn't be together. We just did it. We both supported each other's dreams, but they fell hand in hand together pretty well anyway. She wanted to start her own business, but dealing with the people, and I wanted to run a business. With the success of our local restaurant, we began to consider our other future plans. We're doing well with this adventure. Maybe it's time we find another one, we thought. This led us to beautiful garbage disposals or as society calls them, babies. We always knew we wanted to have kids someday. We just never decided when. Turns out someday happened to be now, and we were ecstatic to be parents. Another adventure together, another segment of memories together, in addition to our family. So this is the part of the story where Miss Emily showed up. She was an easygoing baby, honestly. We didn't have much trouble with her sleeping schedule very much, so we decided, let's move it along and get a puppy with our baby in the house. Binks was the sweetest thing you'd imagine. He had the beautiful fur coat that made you want to snuggle, the pretty puppy eyes that roped you in, and the cutest little tail wag. We found him at our local shelter. He was in need from his owner who turned him in because they weren't ready for a dog. Turns out, neither were we. A couple of months later, we got an offer to expand our business. Instead of one location, we had the opportunity to have three. It was everything we hoped and worked hard for. We couldn't say no. With the change in schedules, lack of sleep, and presence of Binks, we had to change the way we did things. Binks created more chaos and noise, causing Emily to be fussy all the time, so that didn't help. But then, we got pregnant again. I know. Why would you risk it? Well, shame on us, because now we have another on the way. Don't get me wrong, we're excited, but we're losing energy. We finally had to come to a resolve. Change the business, hire a nanny, or send Binks to the shelter again. We just can't keep doing this, Julie would say. I agreed with her. It just made me sad. We mulled over the decision for another almost two weeks, and then we decided to do it. We said goodbye to Binks and haven't seen him since. Oh, man, that's a horrible story. Yeah. I was worried when you introduced a dog that was going to eat the baby or something. <laughs> we already did werewolf, okay? We're moving on. <laughs> that would have been amazing, though. That's uh, she. It just seemed like something Amanda might do. Oh, that's not very nice. What does that say about my why, character? Why did, why did you just something like Mrs. Doubtfire? Yeah. Ooh, why, are you, why are you a werewolf now? Sorry about that. 
I don't know. It's what happens when I'm tired, I guess. My Lord, that was a horrible story. That what poor do you, animal. What do you guys think that the moral of it is? Savages should be put down. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I could not agree more, but maybe don't don't sign up for what you're not ready for. You're actually extremely close. Well, then I'm nice. going to say the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> know what you're getting into before you do it. Huh. Yeah, it's pretty, yeah. What do you count that? What do you think of the situation in general with the dog, with the baby, with their choices and how, wh- their ultimate decision to take a dog from the shelter only to less than a year later, put it back into that shelter? And this is a common thing, which is the reason I wanted to talk about it. Mm. I think it's an awful thing to do. Yeah, couldn't couldn't agree more. Do you think it's the they made the right decision in their no, circumstances? Man, let's, okay, let's let's just smack this down. Those <laughs> sons of bitches are, are basically, you, you know, I realize it's an animal, and some people are like, well, animals not the same as people. Yeah, but you know what? That that causes damage. That really does cause a damage in the animal. And this is this is going to sound weird, okay? But f- roll with me here. Okay, I saw rolling. I saw a documentary called Canine Soldiers, and it revolved around. Animals that are uh, – they're basically associated with people in combat. So they're going with soldiers into their bomb dogs. They're searching for bombs and everything else. They're trying to identify them in Iraq. And what happens is these dogs, after a while, get PTSD because it really drastically affects them. People – some people not, – not all people. Many people love animals and they treat them with great respect. But then there are the people that believe that there are people and then there's animals. An animal is a toy to them and they treat it like a toy and when it becomes an inconvenient toy they discard it well an animal or not it has feelings it has concerns it has needs and wants and its own minuscule dreams so when people do that you you mentally destroy that animal each time that's done to them and it happens to animals all the time sorry i just got on a soapbox but it makes me really want to punch those people in your fictional story in the face (laughs) yeah how do you know it's a fictional story i I don't i don't sorry (laughs) sorry zach well, it's not a fictional story because it happens every day. It does. Mm. It happens a lot. So what's your – what do you think, Zach? Do you think that they made a terrible decision and what would you suggest they do instead? Well, I think – I think well, you don't get rid of your kid when it's too inconvenient. You make it work. You find a way. And I would say I would put a pet's life on par with, if not value more than that of a human being. Really? Oh, boy. You have a soft side that none of us knew about. That's, I don't think that's that rare. I think people, pets are a responsibility, the same as a, as a child would be. P- when you when someone gives their kid a uh, kid away because they're, eh, you know, it just oh my god, I can't get her to shut up. Then people would say you're a bad person. If the dog is getting noisy because the owners can't give it any attention, then you start giving it attention. You don't you don't just give up and punt it to the street. I agree, and I mean personally, I'm. I have a lot of concerns with shelters and there's so many animals that go to them and then people want a brand new puppy. So then they're going to go to a breeder or they're going to go to um, like a pet store to get a new puppy, one that isn't quote unquote damaged because there is a stigma around dogs that are in shelters. And then get them from, don't get them from a pet store, puppy mills. I know. And it perpetuates that when you buy them and then they just put them into the shelter system essentially. And when they go into that system, because people aren't adopting them, they're buying new puppies from breeders or puppy mills, then those dogs, a lot of those shelters have rules against um, euthanizing them. So then they live a very sad life that is tragic and isolated. And it's depressing because nobody, like those dogs just get forgotten. And it's really, really sad. But I'm curious what you guys think of, is it worse to have a dog in a home that it's not being treated well at all or even paid attention to, it's isolated, it's unhappy, probably depressed, and it's left alone or in a shelter where they're at least being taken care of. If you have to give away your dog because you can't give it the attention it deserves, the state should probably just take your kids as well because they don't have a shot in the world. (laughs) No, that's a great point. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, I stand by that. and I th- I think it really just what you're saying depends on people agreeing with you depend on how they perceive animals, what level per se that you guys had already talked oh, yeah. about. I have, I have friends that very much will look at an animal above people. And I have other friends that think, I don't understand why you care so much about an animal. It's just an animal. I mean, 
that, that's a person. That's just an animal. I mean, don't get me wrong. I get it. We're people. So there are breed and everything else. But if we care for something, does it really matter what they are? Shouldn't no, we? I love my stuffed animals all the same. Well, but those people that do that, I mean, they just discard them like they're bad toys or toys they that do. gone wrong. I mean, I don't, they shouldn't be allowed to have animals then ever again in the future. I mean, you made your call. If you can't handle the animal, I mean, I'm not talking about, I couldn't, I couldn't handle it anymore. Maybe it was unruly or I couldn't train it properly. I did everything I could. You know, you made the effort. Okay, I can hear those. So arguments. aggressive animals that. Yeah, well, aggressive animals, yeah. But you know what? Untrainable. What happens in a lot of situations, if you go and look, and there's lots of studies on this, not all of them, obviously, but there are many cases where the animals that were aggressive were aggressive because of the owners mm-hmm. or the neglect of the owner. Yeah. I mean, take some responsibility. If you want to take on that responsibility, then live up to it. It's that simple. Same with kids, same with whatever. Goldfish, feed the freaking thing, change the water. <laughs> Keep it alive. So, but to to the point, avoiding the idea of, you know, we're not thinking about the, the parents or the owners right now. We're thinking about for the safety and the, the well-being of the animal. Do you think that it's better oh. to leave them in a situation where they're isolated at home and neglected or in a shelter where, you know, they're not getting that same family feel, but they're at least being well taken care of and given attention? Yeah, I mean, it's probably best for the dog to go back to a no-kill shelter. But I think Aaron, I think Aaron made a great point that those people, if you if you have to give a dog back up for adoption less than a year, you should your name should be blacklisted from adoption agencies. I agree with you guys on that for sure. I, I would uh, concur. I, it's well, to, I would hope you concur. It was your <laughs> that was point. your no, point. <laughs> no, I mean, I mean, with, I mean, with the going back to the shelter versus being in the in the home. I, I think that's neglect. Neglect is always, to me, neglect is worse than just about anything for for people, animals. It's just so it's just a very sad, sad thing. Yeah, it's very it's very interesting that if you have a kid and you're having difficulty supporting them, the mentality is that well, you fight for that kid and you do whatever you can. Whereas if it's a dog, people are just like, well, get rid of it. Oh, it happens all the time. It does all the time. I was at uh, I don't remember where it was not too long ago, and I actually overheard people saying that they had a puppy. And, you know, it keeps going in the bathroom on the on the rug or whatever it was doing. So we're probably going to have to get rid of it. I swear to God. And they were talking about a puppy. I'm like, you got to train the thing. It isn't like a magic puppy. It doesn't just <laughs> stop pooping. Uh, you got to take that person and shove them into a wall. You have to train your child to not poop in a diaper anymore and poop in a toilet. So how can you expect an <laughs> Rub animal? Rub their nose in it. That's what works. <laughs> People, dogs, whatever. If you rub your kid's nose in it, though, you, you go to DCFS. So many re- <laughs> you have so many resources, though, as an as a pet owner to just Google and find so many different places that are giving you free information on how to train your dog, including videos. You have step-by-step videos. If you can't follow step-by-step videos, you are the problem, not the dog. Well, well hang on. I want to <laughs> interject a second. Now – YouTube can be complicated for people. So what if you get the guy who's like the the gamer wild crazy jackass kind of guy doing a here's how you feed your dog video? Hey guys. <laughs> <laughs> I get it I get it wrong. Is that my fault or their fault? I don't know what's going on. Anymore. I feel like in in the basic sense of feeding an animal, there should be a level of common sense. Well, so common sense ain't exactly common. That's true. True that. <laughs> But there's there's this growing issue because people get into something that they're not even researching. They're just like, oh, a puppy's going to be great. I'd love to have a dog. It'll comfort me. It'll support me. It'll do all these things for me. I can't wait to have a puppy. And it's a trend right now. But those people don't consider all of the work that it takes to actually sustain that life. It's a lot of work. As a chi- it's basically a child when you get a puppy. So you have to be able to put the, your resources, your time, your money – everything into that animal to help raise it appropriately before it's fully trained at the stage that you want it to be. And people aren't doing that. They're just like, I'm going to do this. This will be fun. And then they're like, oh, it's this just isn't good timing for me to have a dog, really. So you got to go, Buckster, Buster. Get not a cat. Buster. You don't have to do anything. You just, I mean, they will <laughs> neglect you. <laughs> they do. Love cats. Big, big cat supporter. Uh, and you it's... know what? I got both my cats from a no-kill shelter. Hmm. Aw. Look at you. Yeah. It's just sad because even the no-kill shelters, they're not living – they're still living a very sad life. Aaron brought up the point of the animals with PTSD. And one of the points I wanted to 
extend upon or reiterate, I guess, is that they have attachments just like we do. So that's where they're part of, I mean, for the soldier animals, they're dealing with PTSD because of the war zone, just like soldiers do. But they're also dealing with the attachment issues because they're no longer with that soldier anymore. Mm -hmm. And so we see it in... In a war setting, we see that also in just like an everyday, you know, civilian setting where they're being taken away from everything that they know, even if that's only been a short time. And then they're expected to just go back. It's not a fair system. I mean, it's adoption. It's like the adoption system, which is also flawed. There's just no good reason for you to get into having an animal if you just aren't going to put in the work for it. It's not It's not a toy. It's not a goldfish. It's very different to have a Hey, puppy. hey, goldfish shouldn't be a toy either. We should treat every animal and thing. I'm saying it. goldfish. Except they are dumb as hell. They can't <laughs> do anything. They just don't have a memory, okay? But my point was that the goldfish are much easier to deal with than a puppy. Hey, you flush them. Hey. Oh, my gosh. I mean, not immediately. You give them a chance. <laughs> <laughs> See if you can make it work. Oh, poor and, Finding Nemo. This uh, is your story. I found Nemo. He's in my toilet. <laughs> oh, man. Come on. So you guys already gave me like one idea of how we can try to fix the problem that's going on right now. And I'm genuinely curious what you guys have as alternative solutions. So if, if somebody returns a puppy, they're blacklisted from being able to adopt mm-hmm. again. Do you have any other suggestions that you think would help this to prevent animals from being killed because they can't hang around any longer or from just overpopulating adoption. Allow them to vote. Allow the dogs to vote. (laughs) (laughs) I don't don't know if dogs are self-aware. I think that, I mean, they're sentient, but they're not. Real, real suggestions. I mean, they come in, they have like a little booth and they put their paws down. (laughs) Like Airbud. Exactly. Airbud. Benji, I swear that one could think. So... You know, they find their way home. I can't Fair do enough. that all the time. <laughs> Zach, do you have a suggestion beyond? No, I mean, I, I think I think Aaron's suggestion was pretty smart. I don't know. Voting? <laughs> the other one. The first. <laughs> the blacklisting. One. Except, I don't know, maybe some kind of, yeah, you, you pick your dog out and then you still have to wait two weeks or something like that. Oh, I like that. Something, you know. That would, like having like a... a waiting time period do you, you think you should that... be able to get a gun faster than a living being <laughs> that's true do you think that there should be any sort of restriction on being able to get dogs through a breeder or a puppy mill even if it's for a short time while we try to you know get the animals that are in shelters adopted well i mean that, that, that is an interesting question though because what about what about kids in foster care nobody wants to adopt they always want to have their own kid so why don't we put a restriction on human breeding? Well, now you're on a different story, Zach. It feels similar to me, though. It is similar. What you're suggesting is a restriction on life created. I think which the is difference... A, which is a dangerous territory to get into. I think the difference say. is we cannot physically... That we think we are God? No, we cannot <laughs> physically have puppies. We cannot make them inside of our body and have them uh-huh. look like us. No matter what we really do... I think it's any... I mean, we already do. We already... I mean, the government already allows it. They already allow people to breed animals, and that's the same thing. And, and so my and question is, do you think that, that we right. should al- continue to allow it? Do you think that that would help resolve the issue if people weren't allowed to do that? Or do you hmm. see do you see the line where Zach is saying I don't think they should – I've never thought that should be allowed. Animals should be able to procreate however they choose. The, the fact that you're forcing animals – and I know we do it for food and we do it for a lot of things. Yeah, that's what I was, was going to say. We kind of have to do it in order to survive when it comes to livestock and stuff like this. But we, we've we clearly drawn a line as a, as a species that we're going to domesticate some animals like cats and dogs. So – we are we we are kind of playing this role where we kind of consider ourselves to be some sort of god, right? Because mm-hmm. we are breeding dogs for profit, essentially. Not essentially. That's what we're doing. That's what people yeah. are doing. Yeah, there's no essentially. That's literally yeah, you, what it is. You aren't you aren't doing it to in the case of a, a farmer f- forcing mating to get more beef. That's you're. I mean, yes, you are doing it for money, but you're also doing it because we as human beings need that. We don't need we don't need a perfectly coated golden retriever. I don't think that one is correct. I mean, it's not it's not a good thing that we advocate that. I never I've and I'm not even like a, I'm not an animal. I don't work for PETA. I don't I don't <laughs> care if you wear a fur coat. I really don't. But I will say 
I, I think the fact that we do some of the things we do, I think killing animals and skinning them to wear them is just creepy in a lot of ways to me. But then again, I like a leather, leather jacket. So what am I? Who do I, what do I know? <laughs> yeah. But, but when hypocrite. You, I know. Absolutely. Total hypocrite. But when it comes to breeding animals and forcing animals to hump to, <laughs> to make <laughs> that word's always funny. I don't care who you are. Forcing animals to hump and then selling them, that is just weird. And I don't understand why. There's so many animals already out there. But because people think they deserve the best of the best and it's got to be fresh and it's got to be, (laughs) you know, DNA sequenced, whatever. It's just weird. Some people say their argument for it is that it's part of their natural state. Like that's just part of the natural drive of of a dog is to procreate, but that's the uh, same thing as people. They have a natural drive to procreate and have sex. Anything with sex organs. But right, that but doesn't mean you force them to do it. Yeah, I was going to say they don't have a natural drive for you to make sure that they have the right legacy breed. Yeah. I know. mean, seriously, they're basically – put it put it in a person's perspective. I know. That's perspective. why I am. No, I I'm mean, not saying the words, but you guys know yeah, the words I mean, I'm thinking of. Put, put it in a perspective. If you have, if you have <laughs> children and you're like – it's kind of like arranged marriages. It's an arranged marriage. You're being forced – they're being forced to mate with someone they don't particularly want to, but their butt smells fine, so we'll, we'll get it on. <laughs> and um, they're dogs, right? I'm not talking about the actual uh-huh. people. I got gotcha. you. So if you find arranged marriages wrong, and I don't see why you wouldn't find this wrong. I understand animals you know, for a food source, and that needs to be done in that respect. Otherwise, people will, will die. I understand that. But for – personal pleasure for entertainment that's just twisted to me and i don't know why people don't think of it that way i'm not knocking away that doesn't think i mean hey you think of it however you want but to me that's just it's a little twisted dark yeah i think yeah i think it is dark the force you know what's more twisted somebody somebody right now some probably some creepy lady is just or man could be just somebody creepy is sitting there <laughs> yeah, right don't now be creepy, with, sexist. A, with one Doberman pincher on one side and another Doberman <laughs> pincher on the other side and she's like just playing Barry White and <laughs> has like a chocolate milk bone in the middle of the floor and just trying to get these two together and that's her whole night like her whole night and watching it yeah she's, she's like just, sitting eating her taco while mm-hmm. she's like crossing she's, her legs she's watching like, it binky binky get in there yeah you want that <laughs> Smell you know it. everyone has their own kink <laughs> and she's filming it for herself later do you guys like to uh wear pe- wear animals is that a cool thing you're into like fur coats no. and stuff no leather uh, coats first of all i don't even think they're cute how about leather gloves do you like those cow gloves yeah like some like like you mean like some sick like biker gloves yeah yeah, it was pretty rad. Fingerless, because you figure, what does that of mean? Of course. They cut the fingers off the cow? I don't know. I don't happened. think I've if, ever worn leather, but I would maybe wear a leather jacket, and I may have looked at one as a child so I could be Buffy. <laughs> nice. You know what? I respect that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> hey. But yeah, I don't- Old people get that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't- I guess sometimes I don't even think about it, and I know that sounds terrible, but like when I see somebody wearing a fur coat, I'm not like- Wow, you skinned you had an animal skinned so you can wear that. How do you feel right now? But I probably well, should think that way, I guess, cuz it is well, when an it comes animal. To, when it comes to leather and stuff, I like to at least tell myself that you had to kill the cow for the meat anyway, so you may as well use the skin. Exactly. The hide. That's, I justify it too. That's one way to do it, yeah. I mean, I do eat meat, so and I can't ladies, really And ladies ladies that look really really good in fur coat, I'm like, well, we probably needed whatever that was. Yeah, who who needs minsks? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> that's not even a thing they don't belong yeah. here i'd be totally fine if somebody wore an octopus jacket would you rad. though wouldn't that be cool no yeah that's <laughs> gross. so many sleeves you'd be the coolest person <laughs> in the world if you're I wearing an octopus on your back think you're wrong we're we're gonna have to agree to disagree on that one now lady, lady gaga is gonna wear this at the grammys next year <laughs> she probably she would. stopped doing all that so do you guys think that my story is truth or is it fiction Unfortunately, it's truth. Truth. Technically, this is triction because oh. it does happen. <laughs> oh, but the Our story itself was not based on an actual human being that I have read about. But it does happen it's all like the time. Fetch, Zach. She will not let this go. <laughs> triction. Well, you, know what, you know what, Aaron? I actually, I hate to tell you, I have spoken to some listeners of Smirk, and people seem to like triction. You are welcome, sir. Yeah. <laughs> However, the story is fiction. Yeah. In this scenario. Trademark pending triction. Triction. Wouldn't it be cool? 
We had our own word trademarked. I'm gonna trademark it. You wanna you wanna spend all that money for? Hold on, how much is it? Let me Google it. <laughs> it's a chunk of coin. All right, what's the title of your story? I feel like I should start coming up with more clever stuff. Oh, is it gonna be an unfair title? <laughs> is it all? It's sheltered. You know that's nice. Yeah, that works. I guess, I like but I need to get away from the one word titles. No, but see, sheltered is very. Uh, it's open. It's it open. is. Yeah, because you say sheltered, I immediately think of like, oh, we're gonna talk about a man child in his mother's basement. <laughs> That'll be my next story. Wait, you went there with that, huh? That's where I, I, I was just being honest and open with the listeners of where the of where the word took me. Huh. If I hear sheltered, I immediately What do you think of? Kind of a man child oh. in the basement. Yeah, that works for me. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. It's either that or the Rolling Stones with that like give me shelter song. No, no. That's so a, you can get a nice. trademark for under two hundred dollars. That's like three hundred. Perfect. You know, that's Google a smart says one to two. All right. Hey, well, get off Google. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Oh wait, hold on. There's a government filing fee of two seventy five per class. Ooh. Thanks, government. Okay. This is what podcast you put your Google down. I'm giving them the information in case they were wondering how much it is to then trademark. Then they're gonna beat you to the trademark Shit. of your own trademark. <laughs> Never mind. You didn't hear any of this. <laughs> All right. Well, as our show goes, we will occasionally pick listener stories to read and discuss on Smirk. If you'd like the chance to have yours, read email to my story at smirkpodcast.com. Join the conversation by joining our Facebook group or follow us on Twitter at Smirk Podcast and be sure to use the show's hashtag Smirk. Don't miss an episode. You can subscribe to Smirk on your podcast app of choice. And please leave us a review if you do enjoy the show. Ding, I'm... ding, ding. Do it. Sorry. <laughs> <Please>? <laughs> what just happened? Our, our website is smirkpodcast.com and we'll have ding, 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 <laughs> do it as our new catchphrase. <laughs> What just happened? I need to stop trying to come up with clever stuff on oh, the spot. You were running on with Triction and then you ding ding did it. <laughs> it's better than diddling. All right, take it. Nothing's wrong wrong with diddling. All right, go ahead. Wait, nothing is? With consenting adults. <laughs> as you remember, oh, as you as you remember, as you write your own life story, always remember to tell it with a smirk. Ding, 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 do it. The, the, my, my, my Skype cut out right as she said with a smirk. Ooh. Did it really? Yeah, it was just funny. Funny timing. <sighs> well, at least it was done. But... Oh, very important. Did you hear ding, 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 <laughs> do it? <laughs>